Hi everybody, how's it going today? Thanks for watching another video. I'm in uh, what would be our pen seven, first, second lactation cows. They just went to the parlor. Sam's gonna put sand bedding in this uh, pen here today. We just opened up the Ehrlich pile, me and Sam, and got back a little bit late. So normally the way we do it is uh, Sam or me or whoever's putting bedding in would uh, come along with uh, the person that's cleaning the pens. I have to put you guys down there, uh, Andres was already coming to clean, so like I was just saying, so the person putting the bedding in, they'll uh, come along with our pusher, our pusher usually has a rake, or he always has a rake, and he'll clean out any manure that might be in the beds, but we'll grab a squeegee, to help clean the beds, but we'll also clean the area at the end here, at the end of the barn by the doors, make sure the doors are good and clean. And then just underneath that gate, normally I would have that gate swung open. So then we'd help bring the cows to the barn or to the parlor and then uh, go load sand. And by the time you're done loading sand, then Andres would have this line cleaned out. And then he'd come in with the tractor and Sam's just about to pull in here actually. Just gonna grab that, grab that squeegee. So we uh, normally bed up about every 10 days or so. So we've got 10 pens of milking cows and we're bedding up about a pen a day, roughly. That's about the amount of sand that's coming out of our uh, sand separator system every day. So uh, yeah, bedding up pen seven here today and then tomorrow it'll be a, bar a pen in the south barn. So we did pen three in the south barn yesterday, pen seven in the north barn today. So we're going back and forth between barns and uh, rotate through all the uh, pens essentially. So Fent 409, we brought that tractor with us from the Netherlands. So that uh, tractor built in Germany, used in the Netherlands, uh, used in Canada, now in the United States. So it's, uh, it's been uh, around the globe, still uh, working every day. I'm just gonna chain this gate up here and then we'll uh, walk over to, to uh, where he's gonna start putting bedding in. So we'll uh, typically come in with four loads. We'll put uh, three loads in the head-to-heads, one, one load in the uh, single stalls on the outside of the barn. Sometimes we'll take a little from that third load, or yeah, that third load in the head-to-heads to use on the outside, but always four loads. We'll uh, head back to the uh, sand separation building and we'll watch them load a load. Showed you guys this before, but all the manure gets uh, push to this gutter here and there's an auger inside this gutter that runs all the way down 
to our uh, manure building which is in between this next barn and then the barn after that. And then we're uh, separating the manure there, separating the sand from the manure and then also separating some of the solid manure from the liquid manure. But the uh, sand separated, we'll at least let that sit for uh, a half a day, 12 hours minimum. Let the, the last water drain out of it. But the, the other, the sand that's essentially been separated from the day before, we're, we're putting that right back into the stalls. So two, one to two to three day old sand, we're, we're putting back into the stalls immediately. We have storage for about three days in there, but we try not to uh, let it get that full really ever. So we'll uh, walk over there, I can show you that. So these, uh, these cows have already uh, been milked coming back from the parlor. And as soon as Andres is done cleaning, he'll close a couple gates so that the cows can get back on the uh, manure alley that's on the feed alley side, so that they don't have to wait for Sam to get done. And then when Sam is done, he'll come through with the rake, rake once around just to level that new bedding off, that new sand off, and then he'll open the gates for the cows. It's a little bit loud in here, but I thought I'd show you this sand here quickly before Sam comes back. So this is the sand we're putting back in the stalls. Grab it here. So my hand doesn't get wet, but there is still a little bit of moisture in that sand. And this sand is coming out of the separators now. This will be moved over there tonight at around uh, five, six o'clock. So we move this sand over there every 12 hours essentially. So the sand that would have been moved this morning at uh, five o'clock. It's, been, it's being put in the pens right now at the moment. Thought I'd jump outside here quickly. It's kind of loud in there, but Sam will be coming back here uh, any minute. Uh, takes about 10 minutes to unload one, one load of sand. He'll come back, load, and they'll do that four times, like I said. It's a fairly nice day here today, mid-20s. Sun was out this morning, south wind, but it, uh, it's going to get pretty nasty here in the next few, uh, few days. They're uh, talking about wind chills in the negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, this area here. And up north, uh, northern part of North Dakota, northwest, they're talking about negative 60 uh, Fahrenheit wind chill. So it's going to get uh, pretty nasty here. So we've got a few things that I want to check. Put heaters, uh, put the heaters in the parlor here the other day. All three or uh, three out of the four are working at the order of parts for the fourth one. Hopefully that shows up here uh, today or tomorrow. Turn the floor heat on in there. I'll have to show you guys that because we haven't used that floor heat in a couple years. But I decided to uh, get that going here a couple days ago. And then I do have a... I want to check the water troughs in the heifer barn. Uh, beginning of November when it got close to uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. I turned some of the drinker heaters on. And there was uh, one set of drinkers that's on one breaker that tripped the breaker. But Chris... Uh, check that out here our electrician checked that out here a couple days ago he replaced the heat heat cable so i'm gonna just check that make sure that that's still on that we didn't have multiple issues going on there make sure that's all working and uh, try to prepare for uh, this uh, cold snap coming here it looks like in about 14 days we're back up in the 20s fahrenheit but this next week is going to get pretty nasty it's uh negative 20 plus or negative 20 minus, I suppose, uh, Fahrenheit, air temp, and it's gonna be windy, 20, 20 to 30 miles an hour wind, northwest wind, so that's part of why it's gonna get down to uh, negative 50 Fahrenheit. We'll probably uh, show you guys loading this, this sand wagon and maybe raking the pens, and then I think we'll uh, pick up here in a couple days when it's cold, because I'm sure it's uh, usually not a matter of uh, if things are uh, going wrong but uh, how many things are going wrong when it's that cold there's always something things just break when it's that cold
We'll catch back up with Sam when he's done with the last load. We'll go check that uh, breaker on those water heaters here quick. And then maybe head up to the parlor. Look at the floor heat there. Kind of explain you what we've got going on there. So we're in the uh, vet room in our heifer barn here now. We've got this panel here. This is just for the drinkers. And it was, uh, let's see, it was this west one here. And it's still on, so that's a, that's a good sign. We uh, originally had this uh, set up to hook up to a small generator. That's why we've got this separate little panel with the cord. But we since uh, last fall, we added this barn onto the main generator of the farm. It was never on the main generator before just because when we put this barn up, it was a new service coming off of our transformer instead of going through the equipment room there. But tied that in last year, so now this barn is also on the generator, which is uh, nice, especially uh, in the winter time when it's cold, make sure that all all this stuff comes on without having to bring a generator over here, plug it in, switch the breakers over, all that stuff. But looks like it's working. Shouldn't have any issues here, hopefully. We'll, uh, but we'll see. In the basement here, underneath the milking parlor, so directly above me, our uh, guys are standing there working, at, uh, milking the cows. And then uh, we're just up there, essentially, and then up there, that's where the cows are standing. And then holding area out back that way. So there's floor heat in the holding area where the cows are standing and then also the exit lanes and return lanes that uh, exit the parlor. But uh, three years ago, I think it was three years ago, before we started the channel, we put new rubber mats in uh, the holding area, uh, return lanes where the cows are standing and uh, pretty fairly heavy duty mats. They've uh, done pretty, pretty good for us here. They're holding up really good. But we drilled those into the concrete, they're anchored into the concrete and we knew when we did that we were going to hit some floor heat lines. And we did, I mean we saw some of the, the glycol coming out when we installed those. So we haven't used that floor heat in the parlor or holding area at all in the last uh, few years. But I decided to uh, see if I could figure out which loops go to the area where our guys are standing. So just uh, uh, looking at these manifolds here, so there's two. There's one smaller manifold kind of back there. That's for the holding area, I knew that. But then we've got these two bigger manifolds that run across, one's the in, one's the return. And just by kind of looking at them and uh, there's five loops here on this side. I'm assuming they, I assumed that they went to the deck where the cows are. And then there was five loops here on this side and six on that side. So my thinking was these, uh, Five on this side, they went to the deck on that side. Got the milk pumps kicking on and off. And then the six loops on that side, I was thinking that those maybe would be for where our guys are standing. So what I did was um, left these closed, left the ones on the other side closed and opened these back up because we had closed them because they're on the same boiler system as the boiler that heats our area where our guys have lunch, the uh, office area, plus our mechanical room and milk tank room. So I opened these up, turned the uh, thermostat up to get them to run on the thermostat. This is an in-floor thermostat, so it's measuring the floor temperature. That was at 55 degrees, and since I turned that up, opened these back up, turned the pumps on, it's, uh, I got it up to 90 degrees now. And we haven't lost pressure on the boiler, so and I can feel just by touching the ceiling here that it's warmer than it was before. So I think I figured that out that the that those six lines are for the floor in here, and none of them seem to have a hole in them, so that's that's good. So that'll help keep the parlor a little bit warmer. We do have uh, four overhead propane heaters that will turn on when it gets below zero degrees Fahrenheit outside. And there are chimneys in the uh, above the parlor and holding area. I did close three chimneys above the parlor yesterday, every other one. And there's two more that are open still. I'll probably close those here either tonight or tomorrow night once it gets really cold. We don't want to keep that building warm, but we want to make sure that it's comfortable for our guys working in there. We don't want to try to keep it 60 degrees, for example, because then cows are coming in from a barn that's 30 degrees into a building that's 60, then back to a barn that's 30, that's not gonna be good for them. But we also don't want our guys to get cold, uh, cold feet and cold hands. So I try to uh, keep, keep the airflow in that building, but also keep it comfortable for them. 
should be able to do that here, especially now that we've got this floor heat working. I think that'll make a big difference. I, uh, I also noticed that I likely had uh, picked the right loops because um, about a day after I had... But a day after, after I turned those on, the floor was steaming at lunch when uh, there wasn't water being sprayed in here. So it told me that that floor was warmer than uh, it was before. So that was a good sign that we've got that working. once sometimes twice and we'll just do this this row this row the far row where the cows are obviously we're not going to move the cows to uh, rake those heads but I've said this before in the past we use fairly coarse sand for the most part it stays fairly level in the pens we don't really have, we do rake an additional time on occasion in our fresh pen just because that pen is very understocked uh, less cows in that pen than there are beds so sometimes the cows don't lay in certain beds and then they'll get a big hump in there so we will come in and rake those an additional time figured while I was here I might as well wait and help open up the gates watch out girls It's a couple days later here, Sunday morning. Taryn's working at the hospital here this weekend, so we just dropped Ian and Eli off at their uh, grandma and grandpa's. It's uh, negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit with the wind chill, negative 55 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about negative uh, 50 Celsius or so. I think this has got to be the coldest temperature that we've ever had here. Or at least getting close to it when you figure in the wind chill anyways. It's uh, absolutely brutal if you're standing outside in the wind. Was uh, similar yesterday, Wasn't air temp wasn't quite as cold yesterday, but was uh, wind was blowing 30 miles an hour. Was uh, a few places in the state hit record lows for uh, wind chill temperature yesterday. I think there was uh, one place that hit negative 60. So far not having too many issues yet, but they is, uh, the day is young yet. There is an overhead door that's got some uh, wheels that came out of the track. We'll uh, go check that out here in a little bit. We did have uh, the, te the pre dip that we use on the cows. It had been freezing up, which can happen when we get cold temperatures like that. It'll freeze up over lunchtime when there's no cows in the holding area and parlor, then usually uh, about 30 minutes in or so, milking again, it unthaws. But yesterday, we started milking at one, quarter to one, by two o'clock, it was still frozen. So I went and got a, I had some heat tape in the shop, 
tape some heat tape up to that uh, to the T tip lines because they're kind of up overhead in the parlor. Hauling the manure from the heifer barn away here. <clears throat> the manure in our freestyle barns is not frozen. Those barns, they're uh, insulated. The curtains are uh, insulated. And just from the body heat from the cows, that manure stays above freezing. It's It'll freeze kind of right at the ends by the doors, but it's not really a big a big deal. But the heifer barn here, manure has been frozen probably the last three days. It's not frozen where it's rock hard, but it's uh, essentially a manure slush. It's frozen enough where we don't want to put it in, in the pump and try to mix it up and pump it out because it's just too thick for that. So we dump it outside where we've got a little manure storage area there right outside the barn then we haul it away with the payloader which is what I'm doing here this morning Sam's going to take over doing this here in a little bit we do have to keep an eye on the cooling on the milk tanks I saw that uh, the silo was 38 degrees and normally you normally wouldn't be too concerned but it had been hanging around uh, 36 degrees and what can happen when it gets extremely cold is a uh, low temperature sensor can go off and the compressor stop working. So I'll probably just monitor that here throughout the day. Not gonna go look at that right away here. If, uh, if milk does get over 40 degrees, then definitely we'll have to check, check that out and see if we can uh, either bypass that sensor or yeah, do something to get uh, one or two of the compressors going if none of them are going. In the heifer barn here now is just gonna check on this manure pump here run it up and down one more time a little frosty in here a little humid heifers are doing okay though even though we're not putting the manure in the pit here we have the ability to pump manure from our sand separation building into here and then we'll pump it back again. Essentially we want to make sure that we uh, don't freeze things up here, make sure all these pumps are still running, piston pumps not froze up. You always want to leave that piston pump down so that when you turn it on if there is a little bit of ice build up in the valves or down below in the bottom of the pump it just breaks that free when it uh, goes up. And we'll always run this uh, before we go home in the in the afternoon or in the evening. Also, just make sure it doesn't pump, doesn't freeze up when it's uh, this cold out. In our calving barn here now, as you can see, it's extremely foggy in this barn. It's bedded pack barn, and we've got the uh, the south curtain on the lean on where the hutches are is closed because it was uh, blowing so bad yesterday. We didn't even have snow really, but. 30 mile an hour wind, northwest wind, it just rolls off this barn and into those hutches if we don't close that curtain. But when we do that, this barn gets extremely hot, so we'll probably uh, open that curtain up here in a little bit. I came in here because I wanted to check this uh, one water trough here. Got this water trough, had uh, probably an inch of ice on it yesterday morning. Looks like somebody cleaned the ice out of it here this morning already. So this, this trough is for this smaller pen here, and then they can uh, drink out of it from this big pen too, but there's another trough right in the center and most of the cows are drinking from that trough. So the heater is working in this thing, but because the trough is so big and there's uh, not a lot of water being drunk out of it, it uh, gets some ice on it. So uh, somebody cleaned it out here this morning already. It's starting to get a little bit slushy on top again. We'll just, uh, just keep an eye on it here throughout the day. Looks, uh, Looks like uh, temperatures are going to start warming up here right now. It's the coldest it's going to get or this morning was the coldest it's going to get and it's uh, uphill from this point on and by the by the weekend we're into the 30s again or just into the 30s uh, and daytime highs so looking forward to that again. Bedded these up yesterday but I think we'll probably uh, bed them up again here today. Just make sure that they've got uh, some straw to get their legs down into so that they can stay warm. Tubes are off because it's so cold they're uh, set on, on uh, temperature. The 
these be the youngest the younger ones on this side they've got the jackets on still looks like they're doing good they're all drinking by the sounds of it so that's a good sign she lost her jacket she's gonna get a new one calf seem to be doing good still drinking just have to make sure that they've got enough bedding to keep themselves warm so we're gonna put bedding in this barn here today and also in the in the hutches the group hutches and the single hutches outside just make sure that they've got uh, plenty of bedding in there last pen of cows going to the parlor here before lunch Funny foggy in the milking barns also. It was uh, this door right here. There was four wheels on this side here popped out. I popped them back in already. Didn't want to try to do that with the camera in my hands. So I had to stand on the wall, lift it up, and on the top there, it's easier to pop them in on top. So that was uh, that was fairly easy. Got that closed back up. This is where we go in and out. So we go in and out of uh, with the skid steer when we fuel it up and also when we're moving cows to and from the dry cow pen. The far off dry cow pen, they're going through that door. It's uh, overhead doors, they, uh, they take a beating in weather like this. The small doors aren't too bad, typically they, they just uh, tend to freeze up sometimes. But the big doors, they get a lot of frost build up on them they just get so heavy just causes problems with the cables sometimes with the drive with the springs we uh years ago we we put a like an eight inch strip of rubber on the bottom of the doors just so they sit off the ground a little higher and that made a pretty big difference really helped uh prevent a lot of problems with the doors and as you can see, it's, I mean, it's not too bad yet, but all these wheels get the railing. It's not so bad now, but actually once it starts to warm up a little, that's when it uh, can get worse. Because then all that frost and snow turns into water. And before it can run off, it freezes again, depending on uh, what the temperatures are. And that's when we start to have problems. So I, yeah, like I said, you can kind of see it here now. It's covered in ice, but down here. About eight inches of, uh, it's actually an old belt from the sand wagon that you saw in the uh, beginning of the video. But cows are doing fine, just eating a little bit more. They'll, uh, they'll tend to eat uh, two, three percent more feed when it gets cold, even though in the barn we're still right around freezing. It is a little colder for them, but I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that, but manure, I mean, the urine and manure is not frozen on the manure alleys. Right by the ends of the doors, by the, right by the ends of the barns, by the doors, we'll get some freezing, but otherwise, uh, these girls are pretty comfortable in here. We'll probably keep the doors closed here today, but after lunch, we'll uh, open them up just a foot or two to get some more fresh air into the barn. And uh, yeah, if it warms up a little tomorrow, I mean, we like to have these doors open as much as possible just to keep fresh air coming into the barn. We don't like to have it foggy in here, but uh, it looks like the peak is partially, uh, partially frozen or closed off by the snow yesterday. As it warms up here throughout the day, that'll start to open up some more and help vent some more air some more air out of this barn because the, the peak in these barns they're open all the time we don't close those at all so just after lunch here now I thought I would check in on the uh, milk silo here it's showing 37 been bouncing between 37 and 38 in the couple minutes that I've been in here I did go look at the compressors it does look like it. so we've got six compressors that go to our our chiller that go to our plate cooler uh, two of them come on as stage one, then there's two or that are stage two, and then a single stage three and a single stage four. From what I can tell, the third and fourth have not attempted to come on, but one of the compressors in the stage in the stage one is not coming on. 
but both of them in stage two are so I'm not going not going to uh, fool around with that now we'll see what it does when things warm up a little bit again it looks like it's not having any trouble keeping the milk cool so we'll just uh, keep monitoring it at this point 37 degrees that's where we want it 38 37 that's uh, perfect so I think we'll uh, we'll probably end the video here I think it's getting quite long at this point but uh, questions comments post them down below uh, appreciate you guys watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next video